the use of decentralized exchanges by blockchain users has exploded over the last couple of years. And in fact, today, over $1 billion worth of transactions are being processed on a daily basis by many of the largest decentralized exchanges in the world. But earlier this month, the Wall Street Journal announced that the SEC is investigating one of the main developers of Uniswap, which is one of the largest decentralized exchanges in the world. So that has a lot of users of decentralized exchanges and developers of decentralized exchange applications really concerned about the legal status and the regulatory enforcement future of decentralized exchanges. So I wanted to kick off my fall blockchain update series with a discussion of decentralized exchanges. And if you enjoy this discussion, you might want to check out some of my other discussions of blockchain law. People who want to exchange one blockchain token for another generally use an exchange. And historically, most of the largest exchanges were centralized. So if you think of Coinbase or Gemini, these were centralized exchanges. And that means that they're controlled by one company or a small consortium of companies. And when one of these centralized exchanges wanted to execute an exchange, it would accept a token from one of its users and then give another token to the user. And that would allow the user to change one blockchain token they had for another. But decentralized exchanges are, or DEXs operate very differently. They function without any centralized party, whether it's a company or a group of companies. And instead, generally by use of a smart contract, it allows two different users to exchange one token for another token without there being any centralized intermediary. When centralized exchanges first started to operate, regulators quickly asserted their right to supervise the exchanges that were taking place. In particular, the SEC determined that when what was being exchanged was a token that the SEC views to be a security, then there's a requirement to register, just like any other national securities exchange, whether it's the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. Similarly, FinCEN ruled that if what is being exchanged is a blockchain token that is being transmitted from one location to another, it has the right to supervise the exchange because it is a money transmission. What both of these regimes mean is that for centralized exchanges, they have the obligation to create a anti-money laundering policy and adopt anti-money laundering procedures, including know your customer procedures. So regulators went to these centralized exchanges and insisted that they adopt these policies, and they've done so, or they no longer do business in the United States. However, that left open the question of what decentralized exchanges would have to do to comply with these regulations, or why, whether the regulators were going to insist that they comply with these same regulations that they are applying to centralized exchanges. The SEC's first confrontation with a decentralized exchange actually took place back in 2018, and it involved an exchange known as EtherDelta. EtherDelta operated a decentralized exchange that brought together buyers and sellers of tokens using a website, a smart contract, and an order book. And the SEC brought an action against the founder of EtherDelta for operating an unregistered national securities exchange. But when it brought the action, the SEC suggested that in fact it didn't believe that the exchange was truly decentralized. It noted that the website was operated by EtherDelta, the order book was controlled by EtherDelta, and the smart contract was upgradable by EtherDelta. So that case did settle for $400,000, but it really left open the question of what the SEC would do if it had to face a truly decentralized exchange and evaluate whether or not it was subject to regulation by the SEC. And the question that the SEC really had to ask itself is how can it bring an action for operating an unregistered securities exchange when a decentralized exchange has no operator? We still don't know whether or how the SEC and FinCEN will seek to regulate truly decentralized exchanges. The report that's been made public by the Wall Street Journal about the SEC investigating Uniswap 
doesn't really clarify matters. That investigation is still ongoing. There has been no formal action taken by the SEC. And in addition, the suggestion of the Wall Street Journal was that the investigation was into one developer of the platform, not to the overall Uniswap platform itself. Now, the chairman of the SEC, Gary Gensler, has made certain statements about DeFi platforms generally, suggesting that they're not immune from regulatory oversight. But saying that DeFi platforms may not be immune doesn't really clarify things. You don't know which of those DeFi platforms, which include decentralized exchanges, are subject to this oversight and which ones are not. In addition, he suggested that some platforms that claim to be decentralized may not be truly decentralized. But again, he hasn't clarified which of those decentralized exchange platforms or other decentralized finance platforms would be treated as decentralized as opposed to centralized. So while the Ether Delta action did provide some guidance, we still don't have an answer to that fundamental question of how the SEC will interpret its own regulations when applying them to a truly decentralized exchange. Regulators have good reason to pause before deciding to supervise decentralized exchanges. First of all, it's important to keep in mind that decentralized exchanges are not just used by investors who want to exchange one form of blockchain token for another. They now are a fundamental part of the blockchain infrastructure. They're used by gaming platforms, by platforms that focus on the creation and exchange of NFTs, as well as a wide variety of different financial applications. In addition, these financial applications are not all based in the United States. Many of them are based primarily or even entirely outside of the United States. What that means is that if the United States were to shut down a decentralized exchange, it could have impact all over the world. And in contrast to centralized exchanges, where a US regulator can go to that centralized exchange and say, we are requiring you to exclude US users, decentralized exchanges, there's often nobody to say that to, and they don't have the type of information about their users, such as their, the jurisdiction in which they're based, that would allow them to wall off those users. So the United States regulators may be in a position where their only option is to either let the decentralized exchange operate or to try to shut it down entirely. And even that may not be possible. But if it is possible, even if the SEC could shut down a decentralized exchange, that may end up causing more harm than good. And a lot of that harm would take place outside of the United States, where other jurisdictions view decentralized exchanges as wholly legal operations. Even in the absence of clear regulatory guidance about decentralized exchanges, there are several things that you can do to minimize your regulatory risk. First of all, creators of decentralized platforms and developers of decentralized exchanges should discuss with their counsel the Ether Delta action and the statements that the SEC has made generally about decentralization. Developers who are trying to build applications that make use of these decentralized exchanges should discuss with their counsel the possibility of secondary liability that may arise if the SEC were to treat that DEX as being an unregistered national securities exchange. And they also should discuss the possibility of there being money transmission issues due to the transfers that are taking place to and from the decentralized exchange. Users of the decentralized exchange or even users of the applications that make use of the decentralized exchange should do a risk analysis and in particular compare the regulatory risk in some of the decentralized exchanges as opposed to other decentralized exchanges because not all DEXs have the same risk that can be anticipated in terms of the possibility of there being a regulatory enforcement action or in terms of the exchange potentially being shut down. So if this seems a little confusing and challenging, you're right, it is. Uh, there's a lot of questions and they don't all have answers now. But there's some good news, I'm a lawyer. So if you do have questions or you wanna talk through any of these complicated legal issues, give me a call, I'd be happy to talk to you.